Good morning to all. Today we are dealing with discomedy gingivitis. A brief note on discomedy gingivitis in periodontics, and the major part will be covered in OMR department. Coming to the learning outcomes, analyze the clinical features, diagnostic procedures of discomedy lesions, outline the treatment options for discomedy lesions. The term discomedy gingivitis coined by Prince in 1932. It is a condition. Uh, more than a disease, which is characterized by intense erythema, desquamation, ulceration of the free and attached gingiva. So, it is a condition characterized by intense erythema, desquamation, ulceration of the free and attached gingiva. So, patients can be asymptomatic or symptomatic, but when symptomatic, their complaints range from a mild burning sensation to intense pain. Approximately 50% of the discomedic cases are localized to gingiva, although patients can have involvement of the gingiva plus intraoral and extraoral sites. It involves not only marginal gingiva, but it also peels at a gingiva often in a band-like fashion. So that is, it can be asymptomatic or symptomatic. If it is asymptomatic, just have to monitor, no need to go for any treatment. But when it's symptomatic, they can experience mild burning sensation to intense pain. McCarthy and colleagues suggested that discomedy gingivitis was not a specific disease in the IT, but was instead a gingival response associated with a variety of conditions. So many other mucocutaneous autoimmune conditions, you can like bullous skin pigot, mucus vulgaris, linear immunoglobin disease, etc. can manifest as discomedy gingivitis. Lichen planus and cisectrical pimpigoid account for among, account about 84% of discomedy gingivitis cases. The clinical features can be classified into mild form, moderate form and severe form. So, so coming to the mild form, it can be seen as diffuse erythema of the marginal, intergenital and attached gingiva. It is usually painless and occurs mainly uh, frequently in females between 17 and 23 years of age. So coming to the moderate form, it appears as a patchy distribution of bright red and grey areas involving marginal and attached gingiva. You can see in the picture that it appears as a patchy uh, distribution. The surface will be smooth and shiny, normal resilient gingiva becomes soft edematous. And massaging of the gingiva will result in peeling of the epithelium, usually seen in the age group of 30 to 40 years. And patient usually complains of burning sensation. The labial surf surface is more frequently involved. So coming to the severe forms of discomedy gingivitis, this form is characterized by scattered irregularly shaved areas in which gingiva is denuded and strikingly red in appearance. You can see that the gingiva is speckled and the surface epithelium seems shredded, friable and can be peeled off in small patches. The mucous membrane other than gingiva is smooth and shiny and may be present fissuring in the cheek adjacent to the line of occlusion. The condition is painful and there is a constant dry burning sensation throughout the oral cavity. So coming to the diagnosis of discomedy gingivitis. Discomedy gingivitis is a clinical term and not a diagnosis. So after the condition is identified, a series of laboratory procedures can be done to arrive at a final diagnosis. So clinically, a thorough history is mandatory to begin the assessment of this comedy gingivitis. Data regarding the symptoms associated with this condition and its historical aspects provide the foundation for a thorough examination. Moreover, that an incisional biopsy is the best strategy for beginning the microscopic and immunological value. In histopathology, microscopically, this comedy gingivitis often appears as bullous lesions or lacrimal lesions. Occasionally, there will be a thin uh, atrophic epithelium with little or no keratin at the surface. Anti-defense diffuse infiltration of chronic inflammatory cells in the underlying frontal tissue. Histochemical and ultrastructural studies reveal separation of collagen fibrils and a decrease in the number of angering fibrils. Coming to the treatment part, it can be of two phases that is local treatment and systemic treatment. Local treatment includes oral hygiene instructions, usually uh, recommendable with a soft toothbrush. Then oxidizing mouthwashes, hydrogen peroxide, 3% diluted one can be used. Then topical corticosteroid ointments or cream like triamcinolon 0.1%, flucosinamide 0.05% or disinoid 0.05%. 
So if it is not getting subsided with the local treatment, especially in moderate and severe cases, you need to go for systemic corticosteroids. Prednisolone can be used in a daily or every, day, every, day, every other day dose of 30 to 40 mg and gradually reduced to a daily maintenance dose of 5 to 10 mg. So in the third scenario, the patient is diagnosed with a pembrigus vulgaris. We need to refer to a dermatologist. This occurs if the conditions for which the systemic impact of the disease transcends the boundaries of the oral cavity and results in significant morbidity or mortality. Then when the oral treatment is provided, periodic evaluation is needed to monitor the response of the patient to therapy. Initially, the patient should be evaluated at 2-4 to four weeks after beginning treatment to ensure that the condition is under control. Observation should continue until the patient is free of discomfort. Appointments every 3-6 to six months are then appropriate. So that's all uh, about the short, short brief explanation about discomedy gingivitis. Thank you.